Well, ladies and gentlemen, we had a very interesting night last night. Basically, at like 1 or 2 a.m. my time, all kinds of information started to leak out online from the, the case with Microsoft and the FTC, and basically attachments were found. I'll, I'll go over exactly how all of this happened, kind of who is at fault as well, tomorrow morning at, in Newswave at 8 a.m., so make sure you check all of that out. But the result has been basically Microsoft's entire like timeline and plans over the next decade, as well as many emails and conversations that were had over the last several years. And one had uh, quite the impact online as it once again showed Microsoft having interest in buying Nintendo. And uh, we'll we'll discuss that here today. So if you guys enjoy the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here to the Spawn Wave Plus channel. So this is the email in question, and it's uh, Phil Spencer basically uh, writing to what uh, Chris Capacella, okay, and Takeshi uh, Numoto. A lot of this just being about Nintendo, but also other acquisitions, and it is from August 2020. All right, so. Three years ago, which I think is very important context that isn't necessarily being conveyed as much online. And in fact, the subject is him responding to random thought, not even like capitalized or anything. So a very informal email chain, I assume here. But everything that's brought up initially appears to be uh, in response to them bringing up Nintendo as like the prime asset, as, as mentioned here. In gaming, this is clearly the time where they were really discussing some big swings for acquisitions. As they also bring up uh, Warner Bros, Zenimax. Well, we saw what happened there, right? Yeah, they ended up buying Zenimax. Valve is also brought up, and Valve would be pretty big for Microsoft because. Clearly, it's it's like the digital marketplace on PC, as well as just on the Steam Deck and everything. So technically, yeah, if Microsoft could buy Valve, that would like really accelerate their plans on the PC side, since it's it's difficult to overcome what Steam has created on PC, and even having the Microsoft Store just built in every system isn't enough right now. So that's it. It is something to keep an eye on either way because. I think it is actually possible that Microsoft could buy Valve at some point in the future. But either way, the big takeaway from this email was the discussion around Nintendo. They say that this is the prime asset for us in gaming, and today gaming is our most likely path to consumer relevance, mostly because Microsoft is obviously known in the office and corporate setting, whereas if you look at their gaming side, that is like the most direct path to just consumers in general, right? Everyday uh, consumers, not necessarily dealing with these big time accounts who want to make sure they have Windows and Microsoft Office in their corporate buildings and and that sort of thing. It does mention he's had numerous conversations with the LT of Nintendo about tighter collaboration and feel like if any US company would have a chance at Nintendo, we are probably in the best position. Here's the important part though. Uh, Phil Spencer, again, responding to this email quickly starts to kind of dissuade them from even looking at Nintendo any longer, saying the unfortunate or fortunate for Nintendo situations. Nintendo is sitting on a big pile of cash. They have a board of directors that until recently has not pushed for further increases in market growth or stock appreciation. I say until recently as our former Microsoft board of director member uh, Value Act has been heavily acquiring shares of Nintendo. In fact, uh, they had acquired, this was again in 2020, uh, roughly 2%. I think it was just over a billion dollars uh, in into Nintendo and Value Act. Very interesting quotes, by the way, uh, as to why they had started to invest in a Nintendo, which according to them, I, I think Reuters had even reported on it back in 2020, uh, started in 2019. Their just overall investment strategy as they were dumping money into Nintendo over the course of about a year and a half. They said that Nintendo was kind of narrow, narrow minded at the time and that a lot of their potential existed just off of like consoles or a system, just focusing on that. Whereas Nintendo would do really well as an entertainment company, which is funny because uh, just recently, in fact, two weeks ago, Doug Bowser said... Nintendo is currently evolving into being an entertainment company with gaming as a nucleus of the overall business model. 
and they're doing better than ever right now. Theme parks, uh, they have the, the Mario movie that was incredibly successful. Seems like Value Act knew what they were getting into there, investing and in, even trying to suggest maybe lean on Nintendo a bit around how to uh, heavily appreciate their, their stock value and, and all of this. So uh, hmm, interesting stuff there. And we're going to come back to that because Phil also kind of mentions that idea that people are shock and all at is the his suggestion for a Nintendo. But uh, either way, he says, without that catalyst, I don't see an angle to a near-term, mutually agreeable merger of Nintendo and Microsoft, and I don't think a hostile action would be a good move, so we are playing the long game. But our board of director has seen the full write-up on Nintendo and Valve, and they are fully supportive on either if opportunity arises, as am I. Again, they, this is 2020. They're looking around for that big swing. ZeniMax just happened to work out for them as ZeniMax is looking to sell. Same thing with, right now, Activision Blizzard. Activision approached Microsoft. So, sure, if Nintendo got to a position where they wanted to sell and they approached Microsoft and the opportunity was there, seems like they would have taken that swing and, and attempted it. But it all comes back to Microsoft or Nintendo wanting to sell. You can say all day, oh, the, I'd, I'd love to buy Nintendo, but the, the opportunity has to present itself. Anyway, they go on to talk about WB, which, interestingly enough, they came to the same conclusion that a lot of us did, in that WB would be a good acquisition if IP ownership wasn't in question, which it clearly is for, I mean, like, the superhero games and stuff that they're making. So would it be worth uh, the money that you have to put out? But... Here's the last piece that Phil said. At some point, getting Nintendo would be a career moment, and I honestly believe a good move for both companies. It's just taking a long time for Nintendo to see that their future exists off of their own hardware a long time. Now, it's uh, he could read that a couple of ways. That their future exists off of their current system, their hardware, as in putting their games on more platforms is the future for Nintendo, but realistically looking at the future in general for games, if people really do believe that cloud gaming as it evolves becomes the de facto way to play games, then yeah, technically Nintendo's future would be off of their own hardware as they'd be creating for, I mean, maybe data centers that Microsoft has stood up at that point. And then, yeah, technically he'd be right about that. But it's also potentially, again, this is 2020, Value Act came in, had bought a bunch of shares and stuff. Clearly, uh, he is in contact with Value Act and what they believe with Nintendo. And technically, they're right about Nintendo being a stronger company as more of an entertainment company as opposed to just solely a video game company. That being the nucleus, as Doug Bowser says, but the opportunity is massive for Nintendo to grow exponentially uh, as they go along. Now, the idea of this being a good move for both companies, I don't necessarily know about that, because as Nintendo has mentioned themselves with their own acquisitions, it's uh, there is this Nintendo DNA that they don't want to necessarily mess with, and it takes a lot for Nintendo to go out and acquire a company. They did it with Next Level because they believed that the Nintendo DNA was there, and Next Level was looking to sell. So it was either I mean Nintendo buys them or some random company, and then who knows what the future is for uh, Next Level and if they would be working with Nintendo at all going forward. So while people are losing their mind a bit on this one online. It's just an email that's three years old that just kind of goes over the idea of, wow, that would be something if we could buy Nintendo and just strengthen our company overnight. Something they're doing, or at least attempting to do, with Activision Blizzard. Something they've already seen results from with ZeniMax and Bethesda. Starfield is doing very, very well for them currently. So, yeah, owning Mario would only be good for for uh, for Microsoft. I don't know about Nintendo, though, although I guess many people at the top of Nintendo would become incredibly wealthy overnight. So who knows there, but uh, that would certainly be some news to wake up to, wouldn't it, Nint Nintendo being bought out by Microsoft? But looks like they're going to play the long game, and that was three years ago. So plans certainly could have changed as Nintendo has grown when it comes to their overall broad appeal, we'll say, with their other initiatives outside of gaming. So I wouldn't read into this too much more than that. As for the career moment that is being referred to by Phil Spencer, I think he's kind of 
recalling what happened with Microsoft when they were first coming into games, where they actually met with Nintendo and kind of discussed the idea of them buying them. And apparently they were laughed at for an hour. At least that's how it was framed. Basically, Nintendo didn't take it seriously at all. And why would they? They were coming off of, uh, I mean, the Nintendo 64, which did struggle against the PlayStation, clearly. But they, I'm sure, had high hopes for the GameCube. And, uh, well, then Microsoft, the new kid on the block, came in and outsold that system. So, I guess technically at that time, Microsoft had the last laugh. But, hey, then the Wii came out and uh, they, they've been rolling with the Switch. So, uh, let me know what you guys think about this one down below with an email with Phil Spencer kind of discussing and responding to the idea of them buying Nintendo this in 2020. Do you think 15 years from now we'll look back on this and be like, wow, they really did it. They actually bought Nintendo. Mm, I'm not sure about that one. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.